we have a functioning lift. This is cool. And it took a ton of work to get to this point. Previously, I just attached the motor and gearbox to spin the conveyor. So let's keep going. The conveyor belt is 14 inches wide. Brackets for the marbles should not be wider than the belt. So I'll make them 13 inches wide. In order to make 13 inch wide brackets with enclosed ends, I need to cut angle brackets into 15 inch long pieces. The conveyor belt is exactly 14 feet long. So if each bracket is spaced every two inches, I'll need to have 84 individual pieces. I cut 87 just to be safe. It was much more efficient to cut multiple pieces at the same time. So I stacked the long brackets to get three pieces from one cut. The saw doesn't cut them clean. They have sharp frays at the ends that'll need to be smoothed out later. So now I have a large stack of jagged end brackets that are too long. In order to enclose the ends, I need to eliminate a one inch square from each side of the bracket. Then I'm left with a section on either end that can be bent in to finish the shape of the bracket. I originally thought I would just do this with the Dremel, but it took 10 minutes to do the first one. At that rate, it would take me 14 hours to do them all. I'd burn out the tool and I'd burn out. So instead, I went back to the saw and cut out 174 squares. This step still took a long time, but it was exponentially quicker than doing it with the Dremel. The cut ends of the brackets were already jagged from the first cut, but now they were even more so with the squares cut out. I used the Dremel to shave off all the sharpies. This created a lot of dust, and I had metal shavings on me the entire rest of the day. Alright, so even after the Dremel, they still had some rough ends. This wouldn't affect the performance at all, but I'd like it to look clean and not have any splinters. So I used a mini belt sander to smooth out all the sharp ends. This created even more dust. I really like this tool and I'm trying to find more opportunities to use it. Early on, I did a mock test attaching a bracket to the neoprene, making sure my method of fastening would work. It did, so I'm going to attach each bracket with two pop rivets. Because of the crown in the bottom roller, the holes can't be on the outsides. They need to be centered, so I space them four inches apart. Since I need to repeat this so many times and want uniformity throughout all the brackets, I made a simple jig with guide marks showing where to punch the holes. All right, the last step of making the brackets is to bend in all the ends. One by one, I bend all 87 brackets. Some of the aluminum showed stress cracks at the bends, but since they won't ever be under stress after this, I wasn't worried. They were stable and that's all I needed. The brackets are ready for paint, so I brought them outside to spray them with black gloss enamel. It took several coats and a few rotations to get full coverage on every surface. In between coats of the brackets, I started working on the marble entrances and exits. First is the exit at the top. This has to be able to catch every marble, and ideally catches them as high up as possible while still staying clear of the moving brackets. I tried a few iterations and figured out that 4x4s on either side would push out the catching ramp to the right spot. Then I designed and built the catching ramp to span the gap between the posts. It will gently and reliably collect all the marbles and funnel them to their next path.
As the glue for the last piece of the catching ramp cures, I started on the bottom entrance ramp. I ran a general test to see how well the marbles rolled onto the moving lift. Then I built a shelf off the frame to support an entrance ramp. The shelf is stationary, and so I'll now build an entrance ramp that is somewhat adjustable. The ramp is 12 inches wide and has a grid of nails that will slow down and space out the marbles as they make their way to the conveyor belt. The nails are staggered and space out with a 1 and 1 8 inch gap horizontally and vertically. So a 1 inch marble will have no trouble working its way to the lift. I added some wings to the ramp so it can be clamped in the right spot and adjusted as needed. Now at its current configuration, marbles could still bounce off the conveyor and fall through the bottom. That wouldn't be good, so I built an extension off the end of the ramp to enclose the brackets. The first two inches match the angle of the conveyor to create a small gap. Then it tapers away so the brackets don't get pinched or caught on the approach. Now, one thing I needed to lock in is the spacing of the brackets. Two inches is just a starting point. I ran some tests at the top, and at two inches, the marbles bopped the bracket ahead on the way off the lift. I ran more tests, increasing the gap a quarter inch at a time. And at two and three quarter inches, there was finally a big enough gap to not have that collision. This does change how many brackets I'll need. Instead of 84, I'll only need about 61. But more importantly, this changes the capacity of the lift quite a bit. No worries though, it'll still be able to handle an insane amount of marbles. At the bottom, I ran some tests with the new gap to see how they loaded onto the lift. It was doing well, so time to install all the brackets. Starting at the conveyor belt splice, I made marks every two and three quarter inches with a silver sharpie. That's where I'll line up the top of each bracket. I placed the bracket, making sure it was centered and level, then marked the two holes with the sharpie. With a wood block behind the belt, I hole punched one eighth inch holes to match the size of the rivets. Each rivet gets a washer on the underside to spread out the pressure on the conveyor belt less chance of failure. When both rivets were tightened, that bracket was ready to go. There's a little bump on the bracket, but the underside is flat and will glide around the rollers without making a sound. Installing all the brackets was pretty exhausting. It took three and a half hours to install all of them. And while I worked, it was like the never ending effort to push the boulder up the hill. The effort was worth it though, because now it's up and running. It was really cool to see it go. And to make it even better, it was still tracking well and running well, even with the added weight from the brackets. Oh. 
I wanted to jump right into testing, but realized I still needed to attach the catching ramp at the top. With the machine running, I raised the ramp up as high as the lift would allow, then screwed it to the frame. I couldn't resist. I just wanted to dump a bunch of marbles and see what happens. It started slipping here because the bottom roller is not pinned to the shaft. It's just friction fit. Something I'll fix during the test and adjust phase. Less intensive tests showed the potential. It's working, but still lots of adjustments are needed to bring up its reliability. I know it's a long shot to get it to 100%, but I'm going to do my best to make this as reliable as I can, so I can put all my focus on the marble machine that it's feeding into. I'm in awe that this thing is working. It's going to be really fun to use. Okay, that's it for now. See ya. <laughs> okay. okay. No, 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 no. Go away.